Western civilization is doomed without more children. The more prosperous, equal, and educated a society is the lower its fertility rate. We must find a way to reverse this trend. By Malcolm Collins. Published, June 2, 2023. While working as a venture capitalist in South Korea, I needed to make predictions about the roles our portfolio companies might play in the future Korean economy. I might as well have asked, what future Korean economy? The average South Korean woman can now expect to have 0.78 children in her lifetime, well below the 2.1 needed to maintain a stable population. At this rate, there will be just 6 grandchildren for every 100 Koreans today, and that's assuming the fertility rate does not continue to fall as it has almost every year for the past couple of decades. That's a 94% reduction in generation size over the next century. When I brought this up with people, I was essentially told everyone knows this but we pretend it's not true because our economy would stop working if people accepted how bad things were. Given that over 60% of South Korea's population is now over 40, the window they have to resolve this crisis is quickly closing, if not already closed. When I returned to the West, I had the eerie feeling that I had traveled back in time by 15 to 20 years. I could see the same trends that were leading to the end of South Korea playing out in front of me, and I had the chance to warn people before it was too late and before the situation reached an irreparable state. The problem is simple. Generally speaking, the more prosperity, education, and gender equality a nation has, the three hallmarks of modern human civilization, the lower its fertility rate is. No country experiencing a modernity-induced fertility collapse has found a way to persistently reverse this trend and restore birth rates, although a few nations have implemented minor solutions that provided temporary bumps. At the same time, our entire economic system is based on the presumption of constant population growth. Since at least the First World War, productivity per worker has grown roughly linearly. Exponential growth has come from exponential growth in the workforce. If the number of workers begins to fall exponentially, the system will break. To make up for the fact that modern civilization is incompatible with child-rearing, but requires it to stay stable, wealthy countries import en masse the children of their less developed neighbors. To which the common response is a shrug, and the observation that this is surely mutually beneficial. But this sentiment is the crux of the civilizational shell game, and why so many people don't see the coin being slid off the table. Nations begin to fall below the sustainable rate once the average citizen earns around 5,000 US dollars per year, 4,000 pounds. This is why when people in the US say we can fix population collapses with immigration, they often don't realize the pools from which they draw, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, collectively fell below the sustainable rate in 2019. Western countries are like farmers draining an evaporating pond to keep their crops healthy, and ignoring the situation because the pond is unlikely to totally dry up in their lifetimes. What about Europe? Some might argue that Europe can draw from African nations, some of which still have high fertility rates due to having a high level of poverty. This is true, but do we really want to make the economic health of Europe completely dependent on keeping those African countries poor? Presumably, we want prosperity, gender equality, and education to proliferate throughout the world. It seems like it should be a big problem that current data suggests no one has figured out a model that makes these things compatible with human flourishing, with Israel possibly presenting one caveat. At least some groups of people should be experimenting with culture in an effort to resolve this incompatibility before the damage from running this car with the check engine light furiously blinking is irreversible, as it already is in some parts of the world. Many presume that surely the economic lot of the average citizen will improve as the population collapses, thinking that while boomers who rely on unfunded social security, state pension, and pension programs to support their lifestyles in their old age will be stuffed, millennials and Gen Z gave up on those institutions long ago. If only disappearing pensions and social security funds were the extent of the problem. 
Our economic system is underpinned by a miraculous invention called debt. When things are growing, debt is a boon. If I make a $10 investment, $8 of that is debt, and the investment grows to $12, I have doubled my equity investment. The problem is that if it shrinks to $9, I have lost half my investment. Counting on a constantly growing economy, we took out debt against every layer of our economies and governments, our land, our cities, our states, and our nations. If the economy ever starts persistently shrinking, which it will within our lifetimes at current fertility rates, the whole thing collapses. Now you might be thinking, the new prenatalist movement aims to fix this problem by creating an ever-rising population. Not so. All we are trying to do is enlighten the public to this shell game so that we can collectively start talking about what we do next. Copyright Telegraph Media Group Limited 2023 This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts. Thank you.